What is up everybody? Today is one of the days we've been waiting on. It is not the turbo, but we're getting one step closer to being able to put the turbo in, I guess, really. Um, in this video, we're putting in the fuel pump um, and everything that involves that. Some things, we gotta drum out the fuel basket, whatnot, and then we're putting the, the fuel line in as well. In the next video, you guys will see, it'll be all the other fueling stuff. There's the wiring, my injectors, fuel rail, ethanol sensor. We're doing all of this today. I'm just doing two separate videos for you guys. But uh, I'm waiting on a buddy to get here who's already done this stuff before, thankfully. Um, we're gonna pull the fuel pump basket out, get the Dremel in, get this 450 in. Um, huge shout out to Precision Raceworks for this kit. It looks amazing. I haven't really obviously done anything with it yet. Everything's still in the packaging, but I've heard great things all around. That's why I went with them. I only want the best for this car. Um, and then after all this, I'll be getting retuned with uh, Frank Mabo through uh, Eurodyne Mastro. So uh, stay on the lookout for that. Uh, I'll have videos coming up on how to log and uploading um, files into the car and all that jazz. But uh, like I said, for today, or at least this video right now, is going to be this fuel pump. So let's get to it. All right. First things first. Uh Get this cover off. Boom. I'll probably clean that up real pretty. Get a vacuum in here real quick. And uh, yeah. that's where she's at. This is the passenger side. Beat the ring off here. And we should be able to pull the whole assembly out. Now once you get this unplugged, you're going to want to start the car and let it die. So you get the pressure out of the line, so it doesn't like spray everywhere when you take the line off. If it even wants to come off. <laughs> there we go guys, you're gonna pull the basket out a little bit, and then uh, this guy right here, you're gonna pull off. Let's see where From it connects. Right yep, right there. That's your fuel float. You don't wanna break that shit. Make sure you take it off. Start <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, well here it is, out in all of its glory. You can see right here, this is where the fuel float connected to. Do not forget about that. And then there, there was a connector that went right there. You're going to have to poke it in that hole there. Uh, get that. Getting this was kind of a pain. It is um, a press here on the side. you got to press it in. But the O-ring has it uh, in there pretty stiff. So that was kind of a pain. This is definitely a two person job at the very least. Uh, you'll have your Venturi here as well. And you have to pop out. That was kind of a pain, but it's done. This is what the fuel tank looks like. There's a connector I was just talking about and then the, the one that was kind of a pain, this guy. And on, uh, yeah, this one was a pain too. It's another one of them you gotta press. From the side. Hold on. Uh -uh. I'm gonna need that anymore. So this, this was down in the side there. I'll I'll link the PDF for all this. But uh, things are being cut. Things are being disassembled. Victor's done this all this one. before, so don't put it back in. Don't put this back in. This is trash no. now. Yeah, this one too. That's trash. Okay. Well, we don't need these. Goodbye. We had to cut, where was the two wires we cut there? Two black wires cut. Um, everything will be rewired here eventually. Got some connectors and things, so. The drilling. There's multiple spots that need to be drilled out, and the sound this makes is awful. Well, 
once you drill it enough, it'll come in half. There is, I'll go over the spots here in a little bit, but this is definitely nerve wracking to say the least. Well, I apologize. I'm not giving the best DIY here. I'm just kind of learning as I go. Victor's got the, the driver's seat here, but we're putting one of these inserts that came with the kit on this uh, here doodad. The lighting would fix itself. I love all the blue stuff. I seriously apologize guys. I, I want to be more in with this, but when I'm with other people and the camera, it's still like kind of awkward for me, but getting things together here. Checking clearances, cleaning things up. Just went out, rinsed this bad boy out real nice. Um, where's the pump at? Oh, here it is. We got the new pump. We got the new pump versus the old pump. You can see the size difference here is ridiculous. It's gonna give us all the things here, the new filter. Taking off quite a bit of material here. Do all this so you can make clearance for the level sensor. Since you're adding these pins on the bottom to raise it up, you gotta make room for your level sensor to sit right. So you gotta do a lot of dremeling. And this is why you're dremeling. You're making clearance so that this doesn't hit anything down in there. It's a little tedious, but making progress so a lot of fitting in and out in and out in and out got the venturi in um, some finishing touches here on the float then we'll wire this baby together and throw her back in definitely not that bad of a process i thought it was gonna be a lot worse it's really not that bad it's just taking it in and out a bunch of times to get the uh the cutting right so nothing hits since you're adding all the height for the pump and all that but it really ain't that bad. It's not that bad at all. Now, if I wasn't getting tuned by Mabo or at home or something, I would have to be doing this like outside of a shop somewhere because with United Motorsports being out of town, I would have to be doing this. You know what I mean? Because you can't drive around untuned on the pump. So this is definitely saving my ass. He actually did that. He drove up to Denver and did this shit in his car outside of the shop. And they, of course, you know, they want $150 an hour to do it for you, and I am not going to pay that, and I'm just like him, like, I'm going to do it myself, so that's what I would have wound up doing. I really didn't want to do that, um, so that was, like, kind of one of my big things with switching tunes, um, but yeah, here we are. So this little guy right here, this is where the, the wires routed previously, like, all your wires up here, they went through here, but now you're not going to do that. You're gonna route them the way they are now under here because this gets compressed and they would get smashed. So you wanna route them under so they don't get hit. You do not wanna use that same hook anymore. We're almost done here. It's very exciting. All right guys, she's installed. Sorry I didn't take video. I'm very bad at this today. But it goes in the same way it came out, basically. Hey, so does this work? Well, that's that. Oh, yeah, it works good. Or? It works great. Well, shout out to Victor here for pretty much doing this. <laughs> um, I pretty much just watched. I did learn a lot. Uh, car runs. We turn the car on. Runs fine. I got a check engine light, actually. I don't know if it's because of the amperage and shit of the, the pump or because I started the car a couple times with the pump disconnected to make sure all the fuel was out of the lines. But I'll uh, I'll check that here in a bit. And then hopefully tonight I'll be flashing a new file. Um, I'll be able to like limp the car around the neighborhood. I don't have an axle in. Um, so I could drive it if I really wanted to. I don't think it's a safe thing to do, but 
whatever. It's done. I'm excited. Now we're about to rip off the intake manifold and start drilling into that thing. Um, I saw this fuel line to put in. I don't know if I'm going to do that still today, right now. I don't know. I need to look up and see how hard or easy it is. I imagine it's not too, too hard, but i to find out. All right. He's working on getting that ECU cage off. It's being a pain in the butt. I'm about to start working on the manifold here. Oh, you're good. I'm going to disconnect the catch can stuff. You got all these uh, torque spits down in there. You got some connectors over here to undo. Um, some bracketry here. Apparently there's a bolt down there you got to get as well. Doesn't look like it's too, too terrible though. We'll see. So there's 10 actual long uh, manifold bolts and then two of these little black ones and then one of this. You got them um, scattered so there's one, this real quick, one right there and then the actual nut goes on this guy and there's another one on the side. Pretty simple. We got the ECU cut open ready to put wires in. We got the loom just sitting here. And uh, we're about to pull the manifold off. Just got a couple couple connections on the side. There's some down in there. So far, so good. Seems pretty easy. Now, remind you, this is the Precision Waste Works 925 CC kit. Um, we're gonna have to drill the manifold real quick to you know for where the injectors go. If you didn't know, the European cars actually come with port injection. We just didn't get that because of like emissions and shit, and we're just not cool enough, I guess, really. So, <laughs> but uh. Here we are. It's about to come off. Super excited. Put a little time lapse up. All right, here we are. This is the intake manifold as it sits in the car if you're looking from the front. You got your throttle body down here. What we're going to do, um, you can see kind of these spots. One, two, three, four. We're going to drill these out, and that's where the new injectors are going to go. And we're going to put these nut certs in here and here, these little go guys. And that's what's going to hold the new fuel ramp. Something like this. And we'll slip it back on and call it a day. Run the wiring, all that. Um, still haven't looked at my, I'm sure, terrible carbon buildup, but uh, this is what the runners look like. I got a new manifold gasket as well, but you can see the carbon buildup on just this alone. It's pretty gross. There we go. Sorry it's all like blown out, guys, but that is my worst one right there. That is my valve number two cylinder. All the west. All the rest look way, way better than that. But that's the worst one. And see, these ones, they got definitely have some buildup on there. Um, not too terrible, though. I thought it was going to be way worse. Uh, this one, sorry, the quality's not the best. I'm trying to get in here with the light and stuff, but you can kind of see there how that one is. Not too shabby. So this is actually pretty nifty. They give you this this tool there you you pop in and then uh you just throw the drill in there like so and like so slip the drill in there and it's gonna it's gonna do its thing nifty now you don't want to drill that fast the whole time that was like it already went through and did its thing you just Give it a few quick hits just to clean it up in there and pull the drill out. But you definitely want to go really slow with it. Um, you got the little flaps down there too as you're doing it. So you want to do one in the, like the cylinder bank next to it, hold it down, and then clean out all the, the stuff that's falling through. And then, we, of course, you got parts cleaner and compressed air to you know clean things. You don't want any of that plastic going back in your engine bay. So, But now all four are drilled and clean. Uh, well, I guess we're gonna mount the little guys for the fuel rail now.
keep forgetting about the camera. We're in work mode over here. But uh, we got the injectors in and the fuel rail, everything test fitted, test fits great. You can't put it on the manifold and then install the manifold. You have to install the manifold in the car first and then put the injectors and free roll on. Um, we still got the wiring to do. He cleaned up the valves a little bit, um, which is very nice of him to do. Everything is so far so good. I'm gonna go over here and help get this manifold in now. All right, it's been a while. Time to give you guys an update. I've been bad at this whole filming thing today, but it's in there. Injectors are clipped in. He's finishing up the wiring here. I still don't know how I want to do. This just fell back there. My ethanol sensor. Um, it's, the ECU is not going to be reading it because of the tune that I'm doing doesn't, like Eurodyne doesn't have flex fuel. Um, but I do want to you know, hook up my P3 to this so I do know my ethanol content for when I do make a map on ethanol. Um, it's going to go like right right in here. I might not even like do it. I don't even have the fuse for it. I might just leave it for now and then when I put the new fuel line, this one in, which I'm probably going to do next week on a lift, um, I'll probably put the ethanol sensor in then and just leave it out for now I think would be the best bet. Well guys, we finished up everything last night. Um, my engine cover doesn't sit properly anymore. <laughs> kind of like hides everything in here. but. The little bit of the time that I have, ran the car and everything, I've got no leaks or anything. Um, the MPI, the port injection stuff is not active yet. Uh, that'll be active once I flash my new tune with Frank Mabo. Um, but I can't, he doesn't want to do that until the car is like actually running, running. Uh, right now my axle is broken, so um, when my axle comes in tomorrow, I'll either install it tomorrow, depending on what time it comes in, or, uh, sun, or Tuesday morning. And then we'll go from there, um, start on the tuning and all that stuff. So be looking forward to those videos. I was going to split this into two, then I realized I didn't record as much as I wanted to. We just like kind of got into work mode and started getting shit done. I tried to do some time lapses and this and that and try and be a little in depth. But really, it's not all that hard. It's good to have a friend that knows what they're doing. Do your research. Uh, if you want to make this a little bit easier, I would maybe buy a new fuel pump basket and do the modding of the fuel pump and stuff before you're ready to actually like install it that way you're just pulling the old one out putting the new one in um, and you can also buy the european intake manifold that is already drilled and has the the nut certs in there already you just won't be able to use the, the the screws for the ones that come with this fuel rail you just have to get different ones that that are the right length and whatnot or whatever um now it makes things a lot easier i might actually wind up upgrading to that one some people do have issues with the uh like melting and putting them in there so if it ever comes loose or something i'll upgrade to that uh, fingers crossed it doesn't i'd like to just leave it and not ever touch it again but uh it was fun it was a lot of fun um towards the end of the night i stopped recording because the car wouldn't start we wound up having uh two wires backwards on the fuel pump so the pump was running in reverse that's totally my bad for some reason uh the black wire was not ground that was the power wire and we thought it was the ground so we used that as ground and obviously that was not correct but um, if you got any questions about any of this stuff let me know uh, i'll post up pictures on my instagram if you want to look br32yce you can get a good look at the valves and whatnot um yeah i'm just excited for what's to come and get these valves clean turbo should be here in the next couple of weeks we'll get that in um, possibly autocross this weekend depends on how far we get with tuning and whatnot so yeah just look out for the next one sorry that this video is so long I was like I said I was gonna split it into two but I didn't so if you're still watching right now you're all the real MVPs I appreciate the shit out of you and uh, yeah just uh, stay tuned and I'll get you on the flip-flop